just last weekend on Movie Math when I was talking about how Lightyear, which bombed in theaters, did amazing on Disney Plus, I was like, Pixar, whoo, they need an announcement at D23 where they make themselves theater worthy again. And they did it. They did it. They actually blew Disney animation out of the water with their announcement because Disney animation didn't really come to play. But, and I don't really feel like Pixar did either. But anyway, it, got, it, it wasn't a tough competition. So Inside Out 2 won the day with the announcement that it's not only coming, even though that leaked yesterday, but it's coming now officially for summer 2024. Some of you might be like, we're very excited about this. this. You're only acting this way because you hated Inside Out, Grace. And to that, I would say that's true. I absolutely hated that movie. It might be my least favorite Pixar film. And that's a bit of a competition with Up. I really hate both those movies, but I I can't even, I haven't even tried to rewatch Up, but I tried to watch rewatch Inside Out recently because so many of you like it so much. And I thought like the first part of it, like the first act wasn't bad, but then I was like, can't do it. Just totally disagree with how they, this movie says people are structured. Ah. But Inside Out, released in 2015, did make almost a billion dollars. So a lot of you do like it. And here comes the sequel, where Riley is going to be a teenager. We already saw her go on a maybe date, but now she's a full-on teenager. And that, that's going to be really great, as, of course, we're talking about emotions here. Amy Poehler returns, because Inside Out is one of her three signature roles. So she's probably delighted that it's back. But Bill Hader and Mindy Kaling... They, they got other stuff. They got other stuff going on. I mean, didn't Bill Hader just do a voice cameo in Lightyear? What the heck? And come to think of it, he did a voice cameo in Toy Story 4, Ralph Breaks the Internet, and Finding Dory. If I were Pixar, I'd be like, was it something we said? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, and what the heck is Mindy Kaling doing that she can't come back? I mean, I, f I think it's very insulting to the fans. If Lewis Black doesn't come back, I don't know what they're going to do. And I suppose some of you would like to see Phyllis Smith return as well, although I really did not care for sadness. I really hated the first film. I control my emotions, not some committee that, you know, I have nothing to do with. I just can't. I don't like the way personalities are depicted. I have a whole problem with this movie. But I guess we can look forward to arguing about it in summer 2024. Now, speaking of talent, uh, Mamadou Athi is on a roll. He first, you know, first joining Jurassic World Dominion this summer, where he absolutely killed it. I mean, it was a small role, but I think he really stood out. Loved him. Uh, I also really like that. I didn't finish it because it was too creepy, but I really like the work that he did on what was it, like Netflix on that Netflix horror show. And now he's one of the leads in Pixar's Elemental, alongside relative newcomer Leah Lewis. I think this poster is really captivating. Their kisses are literally going to be steamy. Uh, I don't know how their love can be because I think I would think that she would completely just destroy water. <laughs> well, we'll see. The con so I think also the concept art is charming. And I'm excited to see, by the way, so it's the elements, right? Elemental, get it? So this is fire and water. So I'm curious to see what land and air people look like. I'm excited. This is coming out in 2023. And I do think that even though it looks great and I love the talent involved, it still looks like a Disney Plus movie to me. I'm sorry. I actually think this is from the voice of uh, the cat. I think I think that's right. I'll, I'll double check it. But I think that this is like his like the story of his parents, and he was fantastic in, in Lightyear. So I mean, but I still I, I still think it looks like it belongs on Disney Plus. And on that note. Will you see Inside Out 2 even in theaters? I mean, if Buzz Lightyear's origin story couldn't get you into theaters, and don't be like, oh, I didn't want to watch it at all, because I know you watched it on Disney+. Plus. All right, then Pixar also showed some concept art, for uh, uh, more concept art, for another 2024 movie. This one just announced, and that's Elio, about a, a Latino boy who accidentally becomes Earth's ambassador to an alien United Nations. What a mistake! He's a child. I guess they can't tell between earthling adults and children. Hijinks, plus I'm sure political and societal commentary ensue. Uh, America Ferreira, who I love, uh, voices Elio's mother. I mean, Pixar made life and death actually quite compelling with soul. Very compelling. I loved that movie. And I didn't think they'd be able to make that, you know, make that work. Uh, so I need to see more here. Although sometimes... Pixar can be a bit heavy-handed, although I know some of you love that. You're like, yes, hit the notes harder. So, I mean, we'll see. I don't know why he has an eye patch, by the way. Maybe he thinks it makes him look more continental. Maybe that's how he fooled them. They're like, 
I don't I don't know what's going on here, but I I mean it's 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 pretty concept art. We'll see. I mean pick I didn't think I would like Onward, and I, I thought that was delightful. Finally, from Pixar, they also spotlighted quite quickly their upcoming series for Disney Plus in 2023, Win or Lose, and they announced that Will Forte will voice Coach Dan. That's a great choice, because Forte is not only quite funny, but really good at the feels, like a lot of comedians, but he's one of them. He's really good at the emotions. As for Disney animation, as I said, I feel not as strong as it could have been. We got a still from Strange World, although considering how Atlantis and Treasure Island both bombed, I am nervous for this movie. Uh, We also got a first look at another new Disney Plus series for 2023, Uwaju, which is a partnership with African animation studio uh, Kugali Media, and that's really cool. But I have to say this looks a bit preschool to me. But also, Bluey and Mickey Mouse Clubhouse are juggernauts on Disney Plus. So this could be very big. It could be a huge hit for Disney Plus. Then to end the panel, Disney Animation revealed their next big animated movie after Strange World, Wish, for Thanksgiving 2023. Disney owns Thanksgiving. When do you think Strange World comes out this year? You guessed it, Thanksgiving. Frozen's Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck are behind this movie, uh, which is, and Jennifer Lee also runs Disney Animation now, and it's named after the latest Disney cruise ship, Synergy. But uh, without the Lopez's doing the music, let's see. I mean, Frozen was not known for its story. Thank you very much. In fact, the story, I think, was quite bad. It was known for the songs. Uh, um, And they didn't really... I kind of liked the sequel, but I know a lot of people didn't. So I don't know. I don't know if that's... I don't think this is a guaranteed home run. West Side Stories, uh, Ariana DeBose, who Disney is all in on. They use her in a lot of their stuff now. Uh, She's also just in Westworld, by the way, but she had a very small role there. She wasn't really in Westworld, but she she was in Westworld. She voices our lead, Asha, and this has a fairy tale setting. It looks actually a little bit like Tangled to me, and that always helps with Disney animation. People love their Disney fairy tales, me included. Sensing a darkness in her kingdom, I don't know if she's a princess or just a concerned citizen, she makes a wish on a star, and that star says, I'm not going to outsource this. I'm going to come to life and do it myself. Alan Tudyuk naturally voices a goat after he voiced that chicken in Moana. Aha, uh-huh, acting. <laughs> I don't know why they need him to do these voices. And you know, I really like Alan Tudyuk. K2SO is one of my favorite droids ever. I think he's quite funny. He's also, well, I don't know, sometimes he overstays his welcome as Clayface on Harley Quinn. Uh, a little Clayface goes a long way. But he's very talented, And but I, you know, in Moana, I wasn't like, who's voicing that chicken? Uh, I've got a little tea for you here, by the way, as I know this will also have very strong LGBT representation. In fact, I believe a gender fluid character who I think is the star who comes to life. You know, the star that she wishes on, I believe that's the gender fluid character. I'm not 100% sure it's the star, but I I think it's either going to be a genderless character or a character that can literally switch genders. And that would make sense if it was a star come to life. The star can do whatever it wants. Uh, Ariana DeBose herself is an outspoken member of the LGBT community, so I'm sure she'll be quite proud to be in a film that has that representation. So that's the Disney animation and Pixar portion of today's panel. Share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. Check out my live action Disney video as well as my trailer reactions to Little Mermaid and Hocus Pocus 2. And stay tuned all weekend for D23 Expo coverage. There's a lot coming. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.